Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. It is Saturday, and I, of course, watched the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight. And I know this isn't crypto related, but you know what? I'm working on a couple really big videos that I know are going to help you uh, coming this week, including a whole plan for exit strategy. And I'm working on creating an indicator and an app um, that I'm going to release for free uh, to basically help you pinpoint when these times are going to be. But anyway, I wanted to share my honest thoughts about the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. And number one, I want to say this congratulations to both. Um, it was a, a huge payday for both of these guys, and I'm going to be very, very real with, with what I feel about this. Number one, you cannot look at anything Jake Paul does right now uh, expecting like world-class competition. You just can't. If there's one thing that I know about boxing, so just to give you a little bit of an idea, back when I was first, when I first got into MMA, like way back in 2006, I was training in, in boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and some wrestling, right? And, and my boxing coaches were always, always, hi, Dion, hi, Eric, uh, hi, Josh. Um, they were always trying to push me to say, forget MMA, you need to be a boxer. And, you know, for a while, they would always, they kind of, for whatever reason, they tried to hide the fact that I had a lot of power. I had a lot of knockout power. And I, I think they just, uh, you know, I'm not even 100% sure why. Um, but, you know, one of them basically told me, like, listen, you're not supposed to know this yet. But, you you know, the power you have is ridiculous. And, you know, you could really be somebody in boxing. And and then some of the all the brothers, man, all my all my black trainers, they were like, dude, you, you could be the great white hope. They were always hyping me up. They were always like, dude, you could you hit like a truck and all this other stuff. And for whatever reason, it was like the white guys were like, you got to, you know, you just got to focus on the fundamentals. You got to, you got a long way to go. You know what I mean? It was such a weird, like two different worlds. But anyway, I love them all. Um, and, and Dion, of course, I had work in my corner or helping me with my training uh, for the karate combat fight that I had back in March. I just love them. I, I absolutely love them. And, and so... But the thing of it is, is back then, you know, I used to tell them, like, I don't want to be a boxer because I don't want to be punch drunk. I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get my noodle twisted up over the years. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you know, if you if you're basically just too deaf and dumb to be able to enjoy your life. Like, what's the point? What did you do it for? And that was the way I looked at boxing. Like, I am not I don't want to stand toe to toe with somebody and just taking repeated punches to the head until somebody goes to sleep. That to me sounds ridiculous. And, you know, but they were always pushing me like, dude, you have no idea how much money you'd make as a seven foot white boxer. Like you, you've got to do this kind of thing. And I was just, I wasn't having it. I like to be able to kick. I liked being, I liked, I liked my range. I like being able to do a lot of different things, but I will also say that cardio and conditioning is on a whole different level in boxing than I think MMA. You know, especially in the early days, back when I first got into it, MMA was the type of thing that you could finish a fight in 30 seconds. I know because I did it. You know what I mean? I, I finished two fights in under 45 seconds. So it's like it, it, it's a totally different animal. Boxing fights are scheduled by a number of rounds, basically giving you time to learn your opponent, take your time, you know, appeal to the audience, put on a show, and you're paid by rounds. You're not paid by if you show up and, you you know, in MMA, it's like you might get five grand to show up and fight and another five grand bonus if you win and maybe other bonuses depending on how you win. In boxing, I'll give you two grand a round. You know, we'll schedule this as a 10 round fight. You know what I mean? So it's two completely different setups. My point in all of this is for a man of Mike Tyson's age at 58 years old to do, uh, what was it, eight rounds, two minute rounds, it's 16 minutes of combat um, for a 58 year old legend. Now, Thinking back on when I was young and I used to watch Mike Tyson fight, one of the biggest things about Mike Tyson pay-per-views was, is it worth it? Because I can't count how many times you'd go and spend 80 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it was back then on a Mike Tyson pay-per-view, and he's ended the fight in 58 seconds. Uh, and you're just left like all of this for that. And that was such a recurring thing. Mike Tyson was known to end guys quickly. So 
the 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 idea was Mike Tyson's going to go into this Jake Paul fight and end it quickly, or he's going to lose, uh, you know, in extended rounds because he's fifty eight. He's either going to just end Jake Paul, or he's likely going to lose as a sitting duck. And at the beginning of the fight, you can see he. I, I feel like he threw one particular shot where he kind of let himself go. I'll get to that in a minute. But when I say let himself go, like I'm in a real fight, I need to take this guy out. And he landed that fight, which sent Jake Paul back. And like, I think Mike was reminded of what I believe was the arrangement. Now, when I when I think about Jake Paul and everything he's been doing, and I think about what all my coaches used to say back in the day, is you always build yourself up. Your mental, uh, your mental confidence is as big a deal as your physical ability and your cardio. And that I mean to get into a cage or a ring and do toe-to-toe combat with somebody, you have to believe wholeheartedly that you can win. And when Jake Paul says a lot of this stuff about meditation and visualization and all that, I've, I used to always do the same thing. I always visualize myself winning in every conceivable way. And I play that back in my head over and over and over until my mind truly believes it. And by doing that, I do it in all things, you know, but by doing that, you're building your self-confidence. And the more you win in those environments, the bigger your confidence gets, the more confident you get, the more energy you have to achieve what your what your body and your mind is telling you is already happening because you're you're confident, you're ready, right? Think of your energy levels if you are either like when you were young, right? And and somebody is bullying you and you think, oh, they're just going to beat me up. They're just going to hurt me. I don't want to do this. You have no energy. You have no inspiration. You just, you just want it to be over, right? Compare that to the energy you have if you know you're going to win. You believe you're the dominant one. You believe you're better skilled, better talented, whatever the case is. So that, that alone can affect your energy levels. But the idea is, is that most fighters in boxing are built up with what we'd call cans, tomato cans. They're basically, you know, they're, they're feeder fights to build your confidence, build your, your fight IQ, basically build you up over time until you're ready for those more significant challenges. The difference between what Jake Paul has done and, and any other boxer in the sport is that he's been doing that with very big named fighters that would be really tomato cans um, by any other name. And I don't mean that as an insult to the fighters, but what he's basically done is he's built himself up and built his confidence off of guys that are legends in their own way. Anderson Silva, Nate Diaz, one of my favorites, um, you know, Tyron Woodley, all these guys, Ben Askren. I mean, Ben Askren's a wrestler. He had no business being in there whatsoever. Um, but all of these guys who they have really, really big names. So it's a big draw and it's a big what if. And that is what Jake Paul profits from and benefits from. That what if nature of, you know, this Anderson Silva, this legend who used to annihilate guys with his hands, feet, elbows, you name it, in such a bravado, cocky way. I mean, I remember, like, I knew Rich Franklin a little bit. I, I trained at the same gym as him, and uh, he used to come to my fight shows and things like that. He was he was a sparring partner with a very good friend of mine. I practically grew up with Mojo Horn, who many of you know because I've talked about his passing, and I get really emotional talking about it to this day, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but, you know, it's like you, you see what these guys are doing, and – the reality is, is Jake Paul has built a career off of living legends and living champions in their own right that didn't necessarily belong in a boxing ring. They're used to they're used to using um, one tool or another over boxing, purely boxing. Anderson Silva, you're just limited to your hands. He's used to using a million different tools to end a fight. You know, Ben Askren, a guy who's basically a wrestler with no hands whatsoever, got into a boxing fight. So that is brilliant. And his build up to Mike Tyson has been brilliant. But his only real loss was against a guy his own age with actual talent in a boxing ring who was an actual boxer. So you, you and, and that didn't end in like a real significant knockout way. Uh, and it was a true test of where he was at the time. And then he said, okay, this is where I'm at. I have this much more to go. I have this much more to learn before I can take on real talent, you know, and so on. So I feel that him building his career the way he is, is a real thing. I do believe he wants to be a champion of the world and he's doing it in a way that 
um, is really no different than any other boxer building his legs, building his fight IQ, and building his confidence. He's just doing it with guys that we all know, that we would all think could have a chance to win against someone like Jake Paul. So that to me is brilliant, and I'm not a hater. However, this fight in particular, and I do believe to some extent like others, we can say everything some form of work, right? Where it's all predetermined, prearranged. I think with this fight with Tyson, I, you know, I saw something recently that said that basically Jake Paul didn't even have his Texas fight license renewed, that it was expired. That could have been a really big problem unless it was an exhibition. And because in an exhibition, the rules are different. In an exhibition, you're not allowed to knock each other out. In an exhibition, just everything is very much a different circumstance. It's not a real fight. And even though this was billed as a pro fight, I don't think it was. I think it was basically a fairly predetermined system that allowed both of these fighters to capitalize on their fame, on their ability, and basically give Mike Tyson an opportunity to basically bow out gracefully without either fighter suffering a dramatic loss by KO or otherwise. Because early on in the fight, Tyson probably could have ended it. Later in the fight, once Tyson was gassed out, we, you could see Jake Paul could have ended it with, with a knockout or, or in some fashion. Hell, even the point at the end of the fight where, where Jake Paul bowed down, the fight wasn't over. Mike could have straight uppercutted him, knocked him off his feet into the stands, won the fight, and there's nothing anybody could have said about it. The fight isn't over till the bell rings. So that alone should tell you they were not there to knock one another out, regardless of the hype, regardless of what they said. For Mike Tyson, I believe that I feel like it's a good thing. I, you know, when I think about Mike Tyson's career and everything he's been through, he deserves the paydays that he's getting. He worked for him. Mike Tyson was bled out in so many different ways that by managers, by Don King, by this, by that. And, you know, I just, I believe that he deserved that fight. And I honestly credit Jake Paul for providing the opportunity for it. And I see a lot of stuff about how Jake Paul is often misunderstood, and I think he is too. He plays the heel. He plays the heel because it gets your attention, and it and it draws you in to, to witness what he's doing, and it draws you in to witness his career. I don't think Jake Paul's a bad dude at all. I honestly, even when asked the question during uh, the press conference or whatever, uh, where, where they asked him, like, you know, how do you feel about, um, this fight? Like how it went, uh, do you, do you, do, something about knocking Mike Tyson out and, and Jake was like, I did the best I could. I felt like that was a classy, um, it was just a really classy way of basically saying we weren't supposed to knock each other out, but I did the best I could under the rules. And, and and basically giving credit to Mike at the same time. There's just a lot of stuff. Like, listen, both these guys made millions and millions of dollars. Everybody watched it. I know Netflix was kind of a bust. I had to watch it later because the, the live stream was terrible. Um, I don't know how many millions of people were watching it live, like 130 million or something. It was, it was a big test. But ultimately, this wasn't a real fight. And I don't think it was ever intended to be uh, outside of getting the people's attention on a big, big sporting event. And I congratulate both of them, quite frankly. I think that it was what it was. And I think as long as you go in expecting that and kind of knowing that, there's always that what if factor. And that what if, what if factor draws a lot of attention. Um, what would happen between Jake Paul and Canelo if it was a real fight? Canelo would murder him right now. I really believe that. If it were another exhibition for a payday, well, then, you know, I think you know how it would probably end up. You've got one guy on his way out. You've got another guy on his way up. And that's just the nature of things. Who would be Jake Paul's first or or, or next? Because I think Tommy Fury was a real opponent. Um, who would be his first real challenge in a real professional bout? with professional fight rules where they're head hunting, trying to take each other out. Um, I have no idea who would really, um, who would be a fair matchup. Somebody of similar age, uh, of similar record, you know, somebody maybe with like 10 or 11 wins and, and you know, a couple losses that show they're human. Um, I think that would be a real test and a real testament to Jake Paul's growth. And I think he's getting there. But ultimately, yeah, I think that anybody that thought this was going to be a real 
like headhunters balls out fight uh i think you missed the point i i really do i think you missed the point i actually credit jake paul for using his fame and and his role as a heel because something tells me if i were to sit down with jake paul in a room with no one around and and he were able to just be real outside of the cameras outside of the gimmicks and the antics that have ultimately helped build his career to what it is today something tells me he'd probably be one hell of a dude and i think if i sat down with him on a personal level i feel like i would i feel like he would be the person i expect him to be off off camera um, and that is somebody who I think genuinely has an interest and a care in helping the sport, um, in helping fighters in general, especially those in the UFC who, you know, let's face it, for the longest time and until uh, Jake Paul started really coming out against the way fighters are treated and what they're earning and what they're making and so on, um, I feel like some of that has started to turn around quite a bit. And, and I, I don't know, man. I think Jake Paul deserves a hell of a lot more credit than he gets, even though the world loves to hate him. Hey, I was rooting for Mike Tyson, too. I grew up on Mike Tyson. I, I was like, I had that what if factor. And, you know, when I saw the slap, um, a part of me still thinks that there's a chance that slap was real. I know what the fight itself is, but I also think that Mike Tyson is still a bulldog. And I, I'm not convinced that that was actually like part of the show, even though afterwards, um, Jake was talking about how, you know, it makes it all more real. And that to me was a subconscious slip, basically saying, listen, we're doing this under a, 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 a kind of a rule set that, doesn't allow either of us to really end each other. Um, but this slap was good because it makes everything more real, more realistic. Like there's real, I think he, if it wasn't scripted, I genuinely think that he, Tyson felt disrespected in this, this mode of like, I'm cutting weight, I'm training, I'm hungry. I want to do a lot that I know I can't, but you stepped on my toe. You disrespected me in a real way. And I'm not going to let that slide. You're getting smacked. And that's all. I do believe that that was real. I could be wrong about that, but I don't know. Um, and I do think that Jake used that. And of course it was used to hype the fight, which either way it was brilliant. And, and, you know, kudos. So overall, <clears throat> I'm just going to end with this and say, I mean, it, it was, it wasn't what everyone expected. Obviously it was never supposed to be. Um, if you look at it for what it was, which was an opportunity for Jake to excel, grow, build his brand for the next fight to empower himself even further in a world that is, is let's face it, folks, most boxer careers are fake anyway. I hate to break this to you, but boxing is one of the easiest sports to rig has always been the case since day one. I feel like a lot of guys who are coming off of like big, long, legendary careers are much more likely to take a dive for a payday because their careers are over. Most don't care the way we all believe they should. And I'm not saying this in the sense of like Mike Tyson specifically, but just generally speaking, a lot of those fights are rigged. When guys have a career in, in boxing, they lead the sport and they're called back and they're, they're showing up for some random fight um, and it's big money. That's why they're there, especially if they lose that fight somehow. Typically, that's definitely predetermined. They need the payday. A lot of these guys are being bled out their entire careers by, you know, latcher ons and, and I, I call them all leeches. And they're just people that want to be along for the ride. They're willing to kiss all the ass and make you feel like a, a superhero for as long as that money's dripping. And then, you know, and then you've got nothing because you've been playing into it with everyone. Kind of like MC Hammer. Like he tried to take care of the world when he was, you know, at his height. And he, he lost millions and millions and millions of dollars because he had so many people that he wanted to take care of. He wanted to be the guy and he was. And he had a lot more power than I think people realize but effectively it drained him of all his funds, right? And I feel that the same thing happens to fighters and then they live that big life and the, you know, you know how that works. So, I mean, ultimately, man, I congratulate both of them on a strong night and um, I'm not a hater, man. I see it for what it is. I appreciate it for what it is. It got everybody asking questions and honestly, it put Mike Tyson back in that limelight one more time. Um, and, uh, you know, whether you like him or not, I think everybody owes Jake Paul um, a debt of gratitude for bringing the opportunity to the public, regardless of the outcome. It was what it was and I appreciated it. It was nice to see Mike back in the ring again even if it was just one more time for those of us that grew up on them till next time, guys, thanks for joining me. Crow your coins and I'll see you soon.